Hello everyone, this is Kat. Welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. This will be the continuation of Hidden Messages. This will be Part 7, Chapter 7, entitled Riddles. Izuka thought that it was going to be another normal Tuesday. The assignment had been practically forgotten about, or Araka had apologized, and everyone was still riding the high of the school festival that had happened a couple weeks prior. Izuka still felt a bit bad about the whole gentle criminal thing, but he couldn't let the man ruin the day for Eri. Luckily, their performance went off without a hitch, and Eri had a great time. The day went pretty normally until after lunch. Izuka tried to get Katsuki's attention during class, but he was unsuccessful. The last time that had happened had been when they were fighting, so Izuka was concerned. Their relationship had been going so well, Izuka had no idea why Katsuki would start ignoring him. Going into foundational heroics, the day got even more abnormal, and instead of just All Might leading the class, Aizawa was also there. There was a lot of whispers as the class put on their gym clothes and met back up in the gym they hadn't been in before. Today's class will be slightly different than usual. It'll be somewhat similar to the secretive communication assignment. Just like previous iterations, you'll be working with a partner. But instead of trying to get a message to your partner across the classroom, one of you will be directing the other. Aizawa spoke as he led them to a railing. Over the railing, they could see a series of rooms, and there was a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room, and a bedroom. It looked as though someone had taken the roof off of a one-story house, and they were looking down into it. Five people will be inside the house looking for cards. Aizawa held up a playing card. The partners will be up here trying to figure out riddles so that they can direct the person in the house to where the cards are. There will be a total of twenty cards hidden, but the goal is to find four, and then enter the code to leave the house through the front door. The code will also need to be figured out by a brain teaser done by the person up here. You can use any tactics that you would like, but fighting is not allowed. You will not be given any way to communicate with your partner. That is something you must figure out. You'll have half an hour to choose a partner and to discuss a plan. At that point, you'll have to split from your partner and be sent to complete the exercise or sit in a waiting room. Aizawa led them back outside to the gym. Your prep time starts now. As soon as Aizawa finished directing them, Izuku turned to Katsuki and asked him silently to be partners, but it seemed like the other boy was still ignoring him. Izuku was almost going to go to someone else, but he figured that he had the best chance of doing well with Katsuki, so he might as well try asking him out loud before giving up. Hey, Kachan, do you want to be partners? Katsuki just looked at him blankly for a moment. Fucking Katsuki sighed. Fine. The rest of the class had split into partners quickly, moved people were preferring to work with the people they had worked with before. As soon as people paired up, they went off into their own, making sure that they were out of earshot of anyone else. Izuku followed Katsuki to the side of the building, leaning on the wall, and Izuku started to plan. Okay, Kachan, how should we go about this? Do you want to be up here working on the riddles or down there finding the cards? I mean, I think I would do okay finding the cards, but I love riddles. I'll be down there, finding the cards. You love solving riddles. Just... We can already communicate just fine. There's no reason to strategize more than that. Okay, but... Deku, shut up. Tatsuki pointedly turned away from Izuku. After a moment, he moved to a completely different part of the wall, far away from Izuku. Izuku was hurt. He thought that Katsuki would never turn his back on him. After everything they'd been through, he thought that they were solid, but this was really making him question that. The half an hour passed slowly. Izuku spent the whole time kicking out the dirt, stressing about what had happened with Katsuki. He was also worried about how this exercise would go. Normally, they had no issues with the communication, but Katsuki was ignoring him. As they stood apart from each other, Izuku took the time to really look at him. He was expecting to see anger or annoyance, something that would explain his actions, but also reassure him that they could still do the exercise well, but Katsuki was just staring at the ground, not looking as though he was actually seeing it. Izuku had seen Katsuki like this only a couple of times, once in middle school, after the sludge villain attack, and again in Kamino. Both times, Izuku later learned that Katsuki had a lot on his mind. After the sludge villain, Katsuki had realized that he wasn't strong enough alone, and he struggled with that. After Kamino, he was struggling with guilt about All Might and having been kidnapped. This time, there was no obvious stressor for his sudden shift, so Izuku was clueless about what was going on and how to help. There was nothing he could do except wait for Katsuki to tell him about what was going on, but Izuku worried that Katsuki would be preoccupied during the exercise as well. Katsuki could work past annoyance or anger to get through something. It might not be pleasant like during the final exam, but he could. 
Izuku had seen that multiple times, but the only time he had ever seen Katsuki attempt something while he was this distracted was the provisional license exam. He couldn't say for certain that being distracted was the reason Katsuki failed, but it probably didn't help. After the half hour ended, the class was called back to the start of the first round of the exercise. Aizawa called out which pairs would go first. Izuku and Katsuki were called to go in the second group, along with Ida and Todoroki, Mina and Su, Shoji and Kota, and Sato and Tokiyami. Once they figured out who was going first, they were split up and taken to different rooms. Izuku found himself sitting in a room with Ida, Su, Kota, and Tokiyami. Their partners were taken to a different room, so they couldn't strategize anymore. Didn't matter to Izuku anyway, it's not like they strategized much to begin with. The room they were taken to was pretty basic. It was a mostly empty white room. The only things in it were a few beige couches and a clock. The students lounged and waited, remaining silent except for an occasional whisper. Izuku didn't pay much attention to his classmates. Instead, he found himself staring at the ceiling, thinking about what could have possibly caused Katsuki to be so lost in thought, but he was coming up blank. Izuku had thought that this would have been a short exercise. They just had to find enough flags to get out of the room, but apparently it was more difficult than that, because they were still waiting after an hour. Having gotten long bored of the ceiling, Izuku had taken to passing time by counting the seconds as the clock ticked on. He wasn't the only one. Over half the people in the room were doing the same thing. As the clock reached exactly an hour and fifteen minutes after the first round started, the door opened. All Might led the group out to the railing that overlooked the house. All Might started handing out clipboards with some papers clipped to it and pencils as they watched their partners get led into the house below. Each of you is getting a list of riddles, some scratch paper and a pencil. Feel free to write whatever you would like on the scratch paper, but please do not write on the paper with the riddles. Everyone is getting the same set of riddles. However, each of you is getting a different brain teaser to figure out the code for the door. The code is the same for all of them, though. Once he finished handing out the supplies, All Might faced all of them. Remember, you don't need to figure out every riddle. You just need to figure out enough for your partner to find your four cards. Also, remember, they don't have to only listen to their partner. They can listen to anyone that's giving hints. They could also just look for cards on their own without getting any hints. Once Aizawa gave them all clear from inside the house, All Might instructed them to turn over the papers on the clipboard and begin. Izuku looked over the list of riddles, searching for one that he could figure out quickly. He chuckled a bit to himself as he read the first one. What gets wet while drying? Izuku hadn't been lying when he told Katsuki that he liked riddles. Over the years, he'd looked up a lot, including this one. Turning his attention to the rooms, Izuku looked for the object that was the answer to his riddle. Grinning once, he found what he was looking for in the bathroom, and Izuku tried to get Katsuki's attention. He clicked like they always do, but Katsuki didn't seem to have noticed. Izuku clicked a few more times before asking Katsuki, Katan, can you hear me? They had communicated from much further away before, so he knew the other boy should be able to hear him, but it seemed like before. Katsuki was too stuck in his head. He didn't answer. Unwilling to give up, Izuku shouted, Kachan! It worked. Katsuki turned to stare at him, but so did everyone else in the room. Izuku shrugged sheepishly at his classmates before starting to communicate with his partner. Check the towels hanging up in the bathroom. Katsuki made his way to the bathroom while grumbling. Was the fucking yelling necessary? Well, if you were paying attention, then I wouldn't have had to. Izuku's a very forgiving person, but he was getting pretty annoyed at his partner. It was one thing to be distracted enough that Izuku had to yell, but to then get mad at him for yelling, that was a completely different story. Izuku turned back to get the riddles and look at them again, angrily, as Katsuki pulled a card off the wall from behind the towels. Unfortunately, he didn't remember the answers to any of the others, so he actually had to think more about them. After a minute or so, he realized the answer to another one. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? He didn't see the object in question anywhere, though. He clicked to get Katsuki's attention and was glad to see that this time it actually worked. Kachan, have you seen any stamps or letters or anything like that? Why the fuck would I know? That's your damn job. Kachan, I can't see everything from up here, and technically my job is to figure out the riddle, which I did. Fucking fine. Katsuki stomped over to the front door. Izuku couldn't see what Katsuki was doing from the angle he was at, but he angrily held up a card as he walked away from the door. Izuku was distracted by a commotion at a different part of the house. Mina and Sato were racing to get to a clock in the living room, only for Todoroki to freeze it, and a block of ice before either of them could. Mina and Sato stopped dead in their tracks as Todoroki calmly walked over to the frozen clock in front of them. He calmly grabbed it with his left hand and melted the ice. As soon as he was able, he pulled a card from inside. 
As far as Suzuku could tell, Katsuki and he were in the lead with two cards, followed by Todoroki and Ida with one. Unless they were really sneaky about it, no one else had found any yet. Izuka turned his attention back to the list in front of him, as the commotion below died down. It got quiet, as everyone regained their focus. The students that were tasked with figuring out riddles were staring at their paper, occasionally making notes. The students that were inside the house were searching on their own. Most of them were looking under things and behind things, hoping to stumble on a card by chance. Izuku looked over the railing, into the rooms on occasion, looking for objects that might be the answer. Occasionally, Kotsky would be searching like everyone else down there, but usually he was just staring into space. Izuku was getting frustrated that he was expected to do all the work, but there was nothing that he could really do about it. By the time that Izuku figured out another riddle, every pair had at least one card. Quite a few were found by chance, not from solving a riddle. A couple, however, did start a long commotion as other groups. Being overheard, someone telling their partner where to look— Ida and Todoroki were struggling after they realized that just about everyone could understand their version of Moore's code. Mina and Sue were having the same issue. Koda originally was just whispering to Shoji, but once it was realized, Izuku and a couple others had moved closer to Koda so they could overhear, forcing them to rethink their strategy. Tokiyami and Sato's approach wasn't subtle in the slightest, but it was effective. Dark Shadow just led Sato to wherever the card was hidden. As Izuku watched Todoroki find another card, putting them in the lead with three, he got Katsuki's attention. Check behind the painting of the river in the hallway. Izuku wasn't completely sure that that's where a card would be, but he was pretty sure about the answer to what runs but never walks, murmurs but never talks, has a bed but never sleeps, and has a mouth but never eats. The painting was the only thing that made any sense. Sure enough, Katsuki pulled a card out from behind it. Katsuki's only comment was an angry, Fucking finally. Izuku was feeling a little better now that they were tied for the lead, but he was really still frustrated, and that made it really hard to concentrate. He read the rest of the clues over and over again, but he hadn't a clue on what the answers were. He recognized that he wasn't ever going to figure out a riddle if he looked at them all at once, so instead he chose one to focus on. What starts with a T ends with a T and has a T in it? As Izuku read over the riddle over and over again, his frustration kept building. T, T, Izuku sighed. I can really use a cup of tea right now. Izuku's head shot up. That's it! He looked around the rooms until he spotted the teapot on the counter in the kitchen. Kachan, it's in the teapot! Katsuki made his way to the teapot and looked inside, and then under it. There's fucking nothing here, Deku. Oh, I found that one already! Mina spoke up from across the room as she held up a card that Izuku and Katsuki could see it. And Izuku groaned as Katsuki grumbled and wandered away, probably to stare at another wall. Izuku knew that there was a chance that he would waste time solving a riddle that someone had already found the card for, but it really didn't help his frustration. He could feel his eyes starting to tear up, but he held it back. This was not the time or place for crying, no matter how frustrated and angry he was. He kept looking at the riddles and saw another that he might be able to solve. What has words but never speaks? He recognized it from when he had searched for riddles before, but he couldn't quite remember the answer. He searched the rooms for anything that could spark his memory. When his eyes landed on the bookshelf in the bedroom, he couldn't help but grin. Kachan, look at the books on the bookshelf. As Katsuki made his way into the bedroom, Izuku's stomach dropped. He watched as Todoroki found his final card behind a calendar. He quickly turned the page on his clipboard to look at the brain teaser to figure out the code. Before he could read it, though, he heard a click from Katsuki. Deku, there's nothing here. Izuku looked up to see Katsuki throwing books around, then... He flipped back to the riddles quickly and began to read them, but not before telling Katsuki, Just start looking under everything in the bookshelf. I haven't seen anyone check there, and there isn't much time. The next few moments seemed to take forever, but it was probably just a moment. Izuku read through the list before stopping on one. What has a head and a tail but no body? The answer was on the tip of his tongue. Right before the answer could come to him, he looked up to see Katsuki finding a card under a jar full of coins. Izuku flipped the page back to the brain teaser for the code and began to read. The first and last digits are the same. The sum of the last two digits is eight. The sum of the middle two digits is nine. The first three digits are in ascending order. The sum of all the digits is fifteen. At first, looking at it, he was overwhelmed. He had no idea where to start, and he was still struggling to concentrate because of his frustrations with Katsuki. Izuku looked over for Ida, only to find him writing furiously. Realizing he was running out of time, Izuku turned back to his own brain teaser and he worked through it. He struggled to keep himself from mumbling. It was a habit that he had worked on for years to break, but he still thought the best out loud. 
Luckily, he had somewhat trained himself to transfer his mumbling to writing, so he took out a piece of scratch paper and went to work. The only thing anyone heard for a while was pencils scratching against paper. Ida and Izuku were working to figure out the code, while the rest of their classmates were trying to figure out the riddles and find cards. Both Todoroki and Katsuki were standing by the door waiting for their partners to tell them what the code was. Todoroki was looking at Ida, ready to find out the code as soon as Ida figured it out. Katsuki was staring at the ground, deep in thought again. Izuku narrowed the answer down to nine different codes, then to four, then finally to one. Without wasting a second, he started clicking to get Katsuki's attention, but Katsuki didn't notice. Kachan! Izuku spoke aloud, not wanting to bring too much attention to the fact that he had figured it out, but Katsuki still didn't budge. Kachan! Izuku spoke louder, but the other boy still wasn't listening. Izuku heard tapping from nearby, and Todoroki made his way to the keypad. Kachan! Izuku yelled as loud as he could, making everyone in the room jump. Katsuki swung around to glare at him, but it was too late. Todoroki already made it out the door. Katsuki's head swung around to look at Todoroki before turning back to Izuku furiously. What the fuck, Deku? Are you so damn useless you couldn't figure out the damn code before then? What the fuck did I pair up with a useless Deku for? In middle school, an outburst like that would have been completely normal, and Izuku would have just brushed it off. Recently, an outburst like that would have really upset Izuku, but after having just struggled on this assignment, the outburst just turned Izuku's frustration into anger. How dare you blame me! I was just trying to get your attention before Ida figured out the code, but you were too busy staring off into space. You didn't do anything the whole time in this exercise. You were the useless one. Izuku glared down at Katsuki, who, rather than yell back, which would have been totally expected, just stomped away, not caring that class hadn't ended yet. While they were yelling, their classmates had been in the first round and led back into the room, so their entire class was staring as Katsuki just left, and then at Izuku, still beyond angry, and Izuku ignored them. He turned his attention to Aizawa and All Might. All Might coughed a couple times, bringing the attention to him before he started talking. Well done today, everyone. We'll be going over the exercise in class tomorrow, so take time to think over where you could have improved before then. Other than that, class is dismissed. Have a good afternoon. Izuku barely let All Might finish talking before he left the room. He knew that his friends would want to make sure that he was okay after an argument like that, but he hadn't calmed down enough to deal with people yet, and he really didn't expect to be for the rest of the day. In all the years that he had known Katsuki, he had never been this angry at him. All right, everyone, this concludes... Chapter 7 of Hidden Messages. Chapter 8 will be next. Hope you guys are enjoying this one still, and as always, thank you all so much for listening.